In this exercise, we're using Affinity Publisher and mastering the table of contents. It's actually a beginner's guide to creating a table of contents. Table of contents can be quite complex, but we've got to start somewhere, so let's start here. We're going to set up a table of contents by example. And I'm going to be using an existing book. Well, it's a book I've started to write, one of the one of the books I'm writing. Let's start by creating a blank document that we can import a document into. And that's the document I'm writing. In this case, we're starting with a 50-page magazine. Now, I did one of these recently, 50-page magazine. So you may still have the preset. Of course, you can use any example you like. It can be just a blank document. But you'll need a set of pages and a file, to uh, a Word file preferably, to pull into Publisher. Now the settings for this, you can see the preset there, 50 page magazine, and I've got the settings on the right hand side. And when it's, when it's opened up and created, you end up with a set of pages like that. In this instance, we can ignore the master page. We're not worried about masters at the moment. This is purely an exercise in creating a table of contents. So go to page 4 and 5 of this exercise and double click to select page 4. This is where we'll put the table of contents. Now the first pages 1, 2 and 3, um, in this case I'll say they're the cover page, the copyright page and the dedication page. And then follows the table of contents. And we're going to place that in a text frame on pages 4 and 5. Why two pages? Well, if you've got a really long book with lots of chapters, and, and I, you know, books can have as many chapters as you like. Um, so you may need more than one page. And it'll flow over to two pages. If you have a table of contents that's longer than two pages, you really have got a big book. So, two text frames on page 4 and 5. Put your cursor in the frame at the top of frame 4 and you can see it's selected there. The ruler is, um, is showing. That indicates that it's selected. Go to text. Up in the, in the menu bar, go to text, table of contents and insert table of contents. This will begin your table of contents on page 4 with a marker positioned on the page for now. And you'll see that in a moment. Immediately you, cl you click on that, selecting table of contents, it puts a table of contents header on your page, aligned left with the text formats panel on the left hand side there is displayed. Your chapter headings should be done in heading one format at least Heading 1 and Heading 2. Um, you can change that as you see fit, but for the moment, if you make all your chapter headings, Heading 1 in style, the Contents Generator, Table of Contents Generator, will pick them up. Now, it says at the top there, No Table of Contents Entries Found. That's because when you first clicked on it, it did a quick scan through the document, it didn't find any Heading 1 or Heading 2 items, so there was nothing to put into the Table of Contents. So it says, no Table of Contents entries found. They should have brackets yet, because we're going to put one in there. There are none there at the moment, that's why it didn't find any. Remember, your chapter headings should be Heading 1 and Heading 2 styles. We're only going to use Heading 1. But what I've got to do first is find some text. Now, I want my story to start on page 6. Whether that's left or right, I'm not worried about at the moment. Stories rarely start on the left-hand side of facing pages. But as this will be a PDF file, brackets ebook, I'm, it doesn't matter what side you start on because an ebook doesn't have a left and a right page. No fixed format, remember. Ebooks, a good ebook is reflowable text. Now, in this case, I'm starting on page six and I can auto flow text in from here 
or you can insert your text however you like, but I like to use auto flow. In this case, I'm going to use a short story I wrote, or am writing actually. Now, placing my text from a story I'm writing, I found the story. It's a story in uh, my Scrivener projects. It's called Shanghai Pirates. It's a Jack Fisher story. Real pulp fiction. Really, the only way to write and keep track of this stuff is in Scrivener. Very, very good uh, program. Now, this is the text I will insert into Publisher. Jack Fisher's Shanghai Pirates. I would, in Scrivener, I exported it to a Word document because Word imports into Publisher very easily. Now, I'm starting on page 6 and 7. Page 6 selected. Text placeholder applied to page 6 only. Now, autoflow will fill the rest I need. I've only got, I've only got one text holder, placeholder, that's sitting on page 6. When I do the rest, because I know the book's about, I don't know, 25, I think, pages long at the moment, um, it will auto-flow and fill as many text frames as I need. Now, I already have, that's done, and it's imported, and I already have the heading in the story. I've got part one, part two, part three, and so on. So as I go through, I'll change it to chapter one, not part one, but chapter one. As this story isn't complete yet, I'll be able to show you how to add table of contents headings individually, in other words, when there's not even any text on the page. Same for the whole document. So when the text runs out, I can count forward, say, 10 pages, put another chapter heading in, and so on to the end of the 50 pages. Well, you don't have a chapter at the end, but let's say 5 or 10 pages in from the end, and I can put the last chapter heading. We'll see that in a moment. Now let's build that table of contents. You've got your headings all done. You can see over there. There's no fancy stuff yet. We can look at that later. No formatting, no fancy table of contents, no underlines, things like that. This is a plain and simple table of contents. And it will be clickable. In other words, if you want to go to chapter one, click on the link for chapter one in your PDF anyway. For now, just the table of contents. Open the text style studio and highlight your chapter heading and then select heading one from the styles. You'll see that on the right hand side there. It hasn't the one that you can see selected is not the one that I'm going to click on and select because I want to select the heading one style. And there you go, you can see it on chapter two because you repeat it for every chapter. Work your way through the book and click on the chapter and you can see over the other side heading one if you look carefully at the pages shown on the left hand column there you can see that i run out of text pretty much about now and there's still 50 pages so what are we going to do fill them in by hand let's go down to the next approximate chapter break enter my own chapter headers put a text box in there put chapter four in it Again, heading one style, and so on as you go through the book. Take a guess. You can always move them later. If a chapter is only five pages long, move your chapter headings appropriately. Now, all headings are entered. Return to the table of contents page. Remember, that's page four and five. And we're going to apply the table of contents. So we're back on page four and five. You can see that little marker there. No entries found yet, because it doesn't know they're there yet. You haven't told it that those headings are there. Now, go to Text in the menu bar, Table of Contents, and Update Table of Contents. As soon as you click on that, presto, there's Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 chapters, and their page numbers. Um, and they're... they're selected across there they're highlighted but they aren't normally of course and there we go because there's no formatting in the first one it's just left and right spread across the page i wanted a little bit of formatting so i've pulled them into hmm, one two three 
four and a half centimeters either side of the center line. So that's it's um you're not wandering all over the page looking for the chapter number. But that's all right. That's a, that's a matter of choice. But it's only as I say lightly formatted. Now we want to export this document so those chapter links are clickable. Not all devices do this and not all e-readers um, will support it. But there's no, there's no harm in making them clickable to start with because in a, um, in a PDF they certainly work. In books, if you export it to books, they certainly do. And if you put it in Kindle, they certainly do. Although be careful with Kindle. Kindle will trundle through and make their own table of contents often at the end of your book. Seems to be a Kindle thing to put the table of contents at the end. But however, note the settings here, exporting for clickable links. In this case, I'm exporting for an ebook type PDF file. Chapter links are clickable and single page by page. Don't export it for all spreads, export it for all pages. Otherwise, you have two pages at a time trying to be displayed. Not too bad on a PDF, but horrible results on anything else. On a, If you want to put it on an iPad or put it in Kindle, somewhere like that. Go page by page, not double spread. Now there we go. There's a PDF preview. And if I click on Chapter 2, unfortunately you can't see it here. And I don't want to put a video within a video. But you know what a clickable link looks like. It changes from an arrow to a hand if you hover over chapter 2. And there we are, chapter 2 from the link. It just goes straight to chapter 2. And there's some of the story there. It's a great story, I might add. I must get around to finishing it. <laughs> save your work. How many people do I see? They forget to save their work, exit out and come back the next day. And... Uh, Rant and rave, pull out the hair, where's my work? That's gone, sorry. Save it, 100% complete. That's the end of our little video and tutorial. Please remember to subscribe and like my channel on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you do. Thanks for watching.